invite Christina Sheldon and Crystal Buemi back to the space. Uh, three artists having a chit chat about art, space, and pandemic postcards. And of course, uh, friends from the audience, please feel free to ask any questions you have of the three of us in terms of, you know, what art is like for us or what, uh, what pandemic postcards is like, any questions you have. So I'll keep my peepers on as best I can. And I know our Vocali friends in the background are also keeping their eyes on the chat. And um, if you can use the raise your function, that would be the most, probably the, 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 the most appropriate way to facilitate this conversation between the three of us. So I'm going to just throw out a question while we're waiting to see if, if we have some hands, and I do know we have a few, but um, first of all, I guess what I wanna say is congratulations to Crystal and Christina. Certainly thanks for joining us this evening, but congratulations on finding a way to be artistic during what's really a difficult time, not for everybody, but really for artists are having a very difficult time um, during during this pandemic. So I, I'll start with, with Crystal. Um, I wonder about, um, sharing with us anything that you felt has been a real struggle right now as an artist, um, or whether you're finding just ways of being creative every day that are spurring you forward. Yeah, I think uh, for me, the most complicated part of it has been uh, keeping just motivation. So, and finding inspiration. Like I normally find a lot of inspiration out in the world. <laughs> not necessarily in my apartment. Too, and so yeah. I think that most people, yeah. <laughs> and so I think that that has definitely been the biggest um, struggle of just, you know, really appreciate, maybe it's a, it's a good thing in the end because it makes you appreciate, uh, you know, that aspect of, of creating an artistry that much more. Um, and, uh, and yeah, but in a sense, then it's also forced, um, maybe for us to create in, in new ways. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. So, you know, at the beginning, it was maybe more of a roller coaster of sorting through how to kind of come up with new motivation and ideas. And now it's a bit um, just, you know, facing new challenges of, of you know, of uh, finding those new ways and, and continuing them. Christina, how about for you? Yeah, um, for me, admittedly admittedly uh the biggest challenge for me has been able to maintain um motivation largely in large part because of mood um i i definitely have struggled uh to to keep inspired and um i um i've shared this story before but i went to um um an artist show once um she was a painter uh, an abstract painter and uh, she had a Q&A after the show and um one of the questions was uh what do you do when you're not inspired and she said I paint through the dark what else can I do and I, I loved that I thought it was such a beautiful saying and it's something that I I've tried to sort of hold to myself because I definitely struggle with maintaining motivation um, to to create something when I'm not inspired. Like when um, the, I, I kind of call it the muse, when the muse wants to speak through me and I just feel it and I just go. Um, so I definitely have, I, I feel like I extra struggles because it's just, yeah, everything's so lonely and, and stunted and, and um, I don't know if other artists feel this way, but you kind of lose the beauty of the, the world. Like what's to feel inspired about when your world is <laughs> going to the kitchen and in the bathroom. <laughs> so absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I definitely think I can echo the sentiments of, of what you both have said. And certainly my experiences come from being out in the world and interacting with people and then you go oh that's an interesting experience i bet i could build yeah. a piece around that um and and that's usually how something organic starts in me we have a hand from megan so i'm gonna call on megan to unmute herself and ask her question or share her thoughts with us yes um yes i'm 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 megan now i'm currently for, for it's for, for you crystal um so when you do the 
the, the, the salt, like you, you, like you start replacing your hand uh, with a salt, um, with a salt, and then you just move it to the right of it. So that's when you do the breathe, you, you just breathe, you move it over, and then you stretch your fingers out. Is that right? Yeah. Um, and, then you, and then you push it forward when you, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Like, how far do you push it forward? Like, right. this. And can you, can you use uh, um, other things? Like, I got, like, sand, like, in the sand, the sand, like, I have, um, there's, there's sand, and uh, some other stuff as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, some great questions, definitely. Um, so the, the first one, um, you know, kind of how to know where to move the salt. Um, so I don't know, Megan, if you were here earlier, but I was starting to mention a little bit about the process. And basically uh, what I did was um, I took a video of, you know, my hand uh, being stretched in, in different ways, different oh, positions. Like um, and then like one way like this, and then you go like this or something like that. Megan, or, Megan yeah. think about, um, one of the movements that Crystal was doing was if you open the palm of your hand and stretch out the five fingers yeah. and then you bring your thumb to your forefinger and then you release and then you bring your thumb to your middle finger and then you release and then you bring your thumb to your index uh, ring finger and then release and to your mm -hmm. pinky and then so you're, you're pressing each finger against your thumb in, mm -hmm. in a continual motion mm -hmm. and so what she did was she she recreated the shape out of a pile of salt on like a white background oh. and just moved the salt and took a picture of it with every movement and then sped it up really fast. Yeah. So it looks like it a hand. Like an okay. of salt. <laughs> you oh, know, when okay. people say like, a yeah. okay. And they kind of form like a circular shape with their, you know, index finger and, and thumb. It's, it's kind of that shape that I'm recreating. But yeah, it was, it wasn't necessarily like I, I had a, already a bit of like a reference of what the shape was for each one of those steps in that stretch. And then it was just a matter of kind of filling that image with the salt. Um, if you kind of, you know, think about it, if you, if you quickly draw out um, even letters, um, spelling out your name, for example, and then you fill the letters with the salt so that the letters are now kind of, you know, being represented through the salt. It's the same idea, but just shapes oh. of onion. Like so you have then, to glue it? Do you have to glue uh, it? I, no, I didn't glue it because I'm moving it so often <laughs> that if I had to glue it, um, I would have to kind of recreate the shape from scratch each frame. So instead of gluing it, I was just very careful when I was taking the photo. Um, and then I just pushed what I already had to the next position. Um, and that's, you know, what's kind of beautiful about my medium is that like, once the frame has been taken, it's now kind of happened and now we move on to the next one. So, you know, it's, it's very, um, it's a moment in time that's being captured that's like not being recreated again. So I find that very interesting. And to kind of go on to your second question about sand and stuff, absolutely. I work with, you know, the, this one specifically, I didn't, um, I had salt in mind, but I experimented with like quinoa and lentils mm -hmm. and just different materials I had at home. Um, but in the end, I found that the, the pink Himalayan salt, A, because it's, it was a bit thicker, so it was a little mm -hmm. bit easier to kind of move, and B, because each crystal in the salt um, had a different color to it. And I thought that that was mm -hmm. beautiful. It was beautiful. It was okay, really so beautiful. I have sand with me. Yeah. Um, I have sand with me. Um, it's like you're doing a quick lesson on the spot here, Crystal, <laughs> with stop motion sand. Okay, I got the sand here. <laughs> I can I can hear it. <laughs> I think it's sand. My favorite are the footsteps. The footstep sounds are the best. Okay. I want I want to know why why Megan has sand in her house. Yeah. Darlene kind of got me that, you know, she kind of got me the um 
But also I could do it with these. And it's like a root it's with rice. But it has, it has marbles in them. Would I be able to do that? Yeah, absolutely. You can definitely so on, either. You can use rice so, or the marbles, anything like that. I'm thinking the only thing with the with marbles. Whatever. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say the only thing with the marbles is that because they're circular, mm -hmm. they might move on you. I don't know. Like, I don't know how mm -hmm. still they'll be able to be. So, so try and find something that has like a little bit of flatness so that it, it can stay still while you're taking the photo or else the oh, marbles okay. are going to be rolling around all over. So I just, I just, so I just, I uh, start from, I, okay, stretch out, then I breathe in, then I take a picture and I do the same thing for the other back and forth that kind of thing yeah exactly oh, okay. just kind of play oh, with okay. it and, and see i'll put it in the chat if anyone's interested but there's a free stop motion app um if anyone is interested in pursuing you know even just for fun uh it's called stop uh motion studio and okay. it'll help you take take your photos for you can just use your phone or a tablet um and it's a really great app to kind of use to start getting into the to the medium and we, we, of course, have not vetted that for screen reader accessibility. So <laughs> you, you may need some cited support with that one, Megan. I don't know. Yeah, but, um, definitely. But play, yeah. With, play with your sand. And, and if you come up with a cool experiment or a shape that you want to take a picture of, you should send it to us and we'll totally, find totally. a way of sharing awesome. it. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Even, and if you only take, even if you only take like two or three photos, there'll, there'll still be movement in between each photo. So it'll still kind of come to life in its own way. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So cool on a white piece of paper. That's perfect. Okay. Thanks, Megan. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Um, oh, I guess, uh, Crystal, let's uh, continue on, on with you and then we'll go to Christina with the same question. But like, what, what's next for you? You started talking about this film and uh, I'm certainly interested in that. Um, I don't know if you want to go into any more detail about it or you just want to share what other things are happening with you in your life right now in terms of, of artistic stuff that you're doing. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so the the film we were talking about earlier, um, I'm, I've been collaborating with Alex, who's the curator of Pandemic Postcards, um, and we just finished, well, in, in the almost done phases, I was actually just sending some emails with Alex back and forth, um, and we're, uh, it's called Postcards for My Balcony, so there's a little connection there with mm, our postcards, yeah. Um, and, and yeah, and definitely um, I'll make sure to share the information once that's uh, available, and, and maybe there can be another screening of, of that film for sure it's a pretty incredible one um, and even from Alex's perspective as a blind artist you know how how quarantine started for her and and how it went it's really interesting because we created we started working on this film last uh September and uh you know when we were making it we did not think that we would still be in quarantine or in you know COVID times now so it's it's very interesting when you're making work that's very time specific you have this fear of like well will people be able to relate and all that and in our case yeah. yes because we're still living it so that's all very going yeah <laughs> it'll still be relevant yeah um yeah. good bad or indifferent right um christina how about you what what's keeping you busy these days in terms of an artist you, have you got songs that you're working on or what are you playing around with um well right now i am part of uh, real wheels theater company um is doing wheel voices tune in and um we wheel voices does i'm gonna get all these names mixed up <laughs> I, I think i'm saying it right wheel yeah wheel wheel oh. voices tune in yeah that's right real real wheels wheel, is a yeah, theater real. company <laughs> it's a little bit of a and time then, <laughs> we wheel voices yeah wheel 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 is in the wheels on the wheelchair wheel yes. voices tune in is the name of the show wow they didn't make it easy i think that's the first time i've ever tried to like say all the words together that's <laughs> challenging okay anyway so there it the real wheels is a is a theater company that helps people with disabilities get back on stage or not or just get on stage in general but obviously because of the pandemic, the, we can't get into studio, we can't practice together. We can't get on stage together. We can't get audiences in because that's not socially distant. Um, but wonderfully they've figured out how to sort of take this to a digital platform. Um, so this year we're doing music. Um, every year they have sort of a different theme. So last year was, I think comedy on wheels. Um, and then the year before was sexy voices. 
Exhibition. which was a burlesque yeah, a couple years now yeah uh, burlesque which was a lot of fun um and yeah so we're working on that right now um just in the process of it um and creating a show so that should be really interesting to see we'll be able to see it on um online on oh i should know this uh may may 5th i think may 5th real wheels is gonna launch it on if then we might be able to bring it to this platform shortly thereafter so that we'll be really cool we'll see what happens because so. we did we did share gimpy which was also a real wheel show that many of you um in our audience today experienced gimpy so it'll be kind of similar in that it's an online production a musical written by a community of people with disabilities and um i don't know christina do you want to share I, as well I, obviously <laughs> yeah like christina and i are in it together which will be fun um, yeah. But I don't know, Christina, do you want to share a little bit about um, the song that you've written for it or because you didn't you, you read us wrote a specific song, didn't you? For I did not actually. So Dave Symington wrote mm. um, the song that they've asked me to sing on. Well, rap on, which is very new to me. Um, I'm not a, <laughs> not a rapper. So um, it's going to be sort of song rap. <laughs> um and hopefully that will turn out okay but dave symington actually wrote um wrote the song um and then i think there was another song called beloved that i was sort of co-writing with andrew valance but it it'll be more of a stage piece it when got it's ready. it got cut ish mm -hmm. because we had to change this to um an online venue the a lot a lot of uh, material unfortunately had to get cut but um we're now going to overlay the song over top of a different thing um so um yeah so nothing i wrote uh ended up in in this but that's that's fine with me i mean i love writing but i love collaborating as well some yeah, some of the other people's some of the yeah. I think that's probably something we all share in common in this space is the the ability to collaborate with other artists, which is I fun. I love it. I remember before, um, and even co writing music. I didn't know that I would love it as much as I did until I started doing it. It kind of takes the pressure off just a, just a little. I was bit. amazed that I did because usually, I mean, your ego can get in the way and you can really fall in love with certain lines and certain um, things. And so, if you're really like rigid about I like this and and this has to be this way it doesn't work really well but if you're open-minded you can end up with some really be beautiful pieces of work that you would never have been able to create yourself because they have different ears and different yeah you know melodic takes and it's a it's a funny thing I'll, I'll um in the writing process because I, I was helping write this show and I'm helping write another show and so as writers we all so I've heard three uh women in my life all fantastic mentors for me all the same phrase in, in like the last two weeks they've all used the same phrase and so now it's one of my phrases because if they can use it I can use it too um <laughs> which is you have to learn to kill your darlings right yeah, yeah. like we get yeah. so and I I don't know Crystal how do you feel that as being a stop motion um animator it's like you know you have this great idea and then you have all this content and you're like no I just feel like there's got to be cuts and that's so hard when you're the creator of something oh, yeah. to be able to kill your darlings Absolutely. Yeah. I'm so one of the other things I wanted to say was uh, I'm kind of working on a TV series. That's like the next uh, oh. work that I'll be doing. And uh, it's very exciting because it's uh, been approved that we can be in studio. So I will finally be able to <gasps> leave my apartment <laughs> oh. and uh, through very rigid, you know, COVID obviously precautions, we're getting tested weekly and it's still a very small crew but we will be working um, to create a series. And one of the things, as you're saying, you know, <laughs> you know, killing your darlings is yeah. you can take, you know, five hours to animate 10 seconds and the director can come in and say, mm, I don't think so. Or, <laughs> I, don't think so. Know, I liked it up until this point. So then you have to like get this, everything <gasps> reset, like, and, and you, ha you have to learn to let it go. Like it, mm -hmm. it takes however long it takes and you may or may not use it. And <laughs> that's the nature that of it. That is what it so, is. Yeah. That is the exactly. nature of art. Yeah. yeah totally. Especially to get that perfect product. Because if you didn't kill your darlings then you would just have a whole lengthy <laughs> mess of yeah. crap that doesn't exactly. like. <laughs> yeah. You need to be able to filter for sure. Yeah. We've got, uh, um, we've got a hand, to... sorry. Um, I just want to acknowledge that we have a hand up, Rachel. So let's take Rachel's question or comment and then we can continue. Rachel and you. Oh, there you are. Hi, Rachel. 
Hi, everyone. Oh, thank you so much for sharing your films. They were really great. Oh, actually, I guess I'd say postcards. They were really beautiful. So um, thank you so much. And I, and I just was wondering, um, well, one, about the postcards. I remember seeing like something about an e about the email. And I was in school at the time. And I got really distracted. And I forgot to sign up. So what my first question is, is, is there a place that we could watch like all the 21 postcards? Yep. And then the second question, I was wondering, um, do you uh, do you all have pages, like social media pages that uh, we could like follow like your work or, you know, are you on like anything on YouTube or anything like that? So thank you so much. Awesome, Rachel. Well, I can answer the first question and it might go into the second, but um, real uh, uh, Vocalize, whose hat am I wearing tonight? Vocalize sends out an email after this programming with some links and we'll send out a link to the webpage for waterfront uh, center and the pandemic postcards and you can find those all on their website you can even google pandemic postcards waterfront center and that would come up but we'll send the links and you all uh crystal and christina are welcome to share social media now but also to email it to me and we can circulate that as well if people want to follow follow you all and both of these individuals are on my podcast as well. So uh, stay tuned for those episodes coming up. We also learn totally different things. Anyways, let's go to Christina. We'll go to you first. Uh, I have a website, Christina Sheldon music.com. Um, Christina spelled with a K and Sheldon spelled with a D E N not Sheldon. I'm a Sheldon. Um, and I will be on Spotify soon. I just keep forgetting to actually click the buttons <laughs> so uh, check spotify in a couple weeks and i should hopefully be there month at the month at tops um and yeah actually the song that you just um that that was my pandemic postcard that's the song that i'll be uploading along with um a number of other songs that i had from before that i didn't realize were decent enough to be put on spotify because Anyway, a bunch of my friends, um, the producers were like, oh, I thought that was your EP. And I was like, oh, I thought that was just crappy home recording stuff. So, <laughs> um, Little did you know. Yeah. Just saw about you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I also have a website. It's also my name. So C-R-I-S-T-A-L. B U E M I dot com, uh, crystalbuemi.com. And then I also have uh, my Instagram is one that I kind of keep a little bit more from day to day. And there, there's a lot more um, just like behind the scenes and, and just kind of updates. And if I have workshops and things like that, I, I put it there. Um, and my Instagram is crystal, C R I S T A L, clear, C L E A R underscore. So definitely I'll share that uh, information with Amy as well, but yeah. definitely, yeah, I'd love uh, to have, have you guys follow. <laughs> yeah. That's right. I, I, sh I apologize. I should have mentioned my Facebook as well, because that's the one where I'll actually, if I do a show, which I haven't been doing in a while, but my Facebook is the one that I am better at updating. And it's just Christina Sheldon music as well. Awesome. Um, yeah. If you send those links to me, we'll make sure we circulate them to the, to the crowd. And then it's, it's an easy one click to find your sort of, how do I write this down? Do I have my brailler handy? Did I record that? <laughs> so um, I did awesome. also want to mention one more thing that I forgot to mention on up, what's upcoming is the, the plan is to create an entire album um, with this sort of newer sound that I have because I, I normally sing very indie acoustic and um, but I really want to create a sort of more, uh, I, you know, chill house kind of vibe stuff. Awesome. Thanks. Awesome. I, you know, I could spend much more time with you in a space, but honoring the time that we've spent together, I want to thank you for joining us this evening to share a little bit about your artistry and, and um, just a little bit about your humanity. You know, it's just nice to be in a space with artists and to share. Um, before we let you both go, though, Crystal has volunteered to be our uh, draw master uh apprentice i don't know I, I have to come up with a more clever title than that crystal but we're gonna welcome donna to our space yeah that's right i'm, I'm taking requests anybody email them to me um so we'll invite donna and um we'll go through the draw and folks on the line you have to be in the space to win and um this is an international draw so wherever you are joining us um if you identify with blindness or partial sight and are are eligible as in you're not a board member of vocal eye then um you are entered into this particular draw so 
without further ado, I know Dawn is standing by. Here I am. All right, Crystal, I am shaking the name. So whenever you feel, okay. please say stop. All right, and stop. <laughs> Rachel. Wonderful. Rachel. Rachel's won a prize. And um, Rachel, I, I know what that's going to be. <laughs> I think I've already sent you one, but that's all right, my friend. Um, you're going to get a, a mask lanyard that's going to be sent to you. Um, so we'll, we'll connect uh, offline to make sure that we have the correct address and everything. So um, and Rachel's still with us, right? We still have Rachel in the space. Yes, thank you guys. Thank awesome. you so much. I appreciate it. I was just going to say, I feel like visiting Canada sometimes so I could just be eligible for like the one that you just do <laughs> for uh, BC sometime, you know? Yeah, <laughs> well, we're, so much. We, we may not be able to send you a gift card to, you know, one of our local restaurants here in Vancouver. But as I say to all my friends on the line, if you ever come up to Vancouver, I will take you to the Moose's Down Under Pub and I'll treat you to lunch. So if you're ever in town, that's that's an open offer for anybody. Um, just don't all come at once, please. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe do, and we'll make a day of it. Um, thank you, Christina Sheldon. Thank you, Mr. for joining us this, uh, this evening and sharing us uh, a bit about who you are and, and what you do in the art space. So I really enjoyed having you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amy, for everything. Thank you.